So, yeah, so like I was saying, guys, we pretty much completed the entire thing yesterday, right? Um, but as I said, there was just two more points that we weren't able to finish. And I, I know some people did take the screenshot up or a picture of the screen rather, but just for the purpose of ensuring that you know everybody is on the same page, we did talk about faith in a previous study, and so I really didn't want to delve too deep into faith um, because we did go in much detail when we looked at the F word, but um. You know, a lot of people have a challenge in terms of applying the shield of faith or picking up the shield of faith and using it because, you know, they're caught between should I completely trust God or should or is this a time for me to act? And, you know, we tend to use the scripture that says faith without works is dead. And so if you want us to just look at these, it's just in the book of James, chapter number two, we're going to read 14, 18, 24, and 26. Um, just those verses quickly so that we don't take up too much time. And then we'll see what the word of God says regarding that. <clears throat> James 2, 14 reads, Now what does it profit my brethren? Though a man say he has faith and have not works, can faith save him? 18. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. 24. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. 25 and last. Likewise, no, 25, also, likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Sure. Thank you. All right. So what the scripture here is saying is that we are going to use the shield we're going to take it up and we're going to use it um but we also have to demonstrate how we have faith as the scripture says rahab was justified by her works so we are saved through faith so that nobody can boast but we are justified by our works so if we are praying for the lord to send a harvest, but we did not go out and plant a seed. Will we ever get a harvest? No. If no. we're praying for the Lord to send a harvest and we plant the seed, but we never water it, we never um, till, till the soil around it to what we would call mulch it up, will we get a harvest? No. So that is what James is saying. Show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith along with my works. Because if I am asking for God to bless me with a husband, for those of us who are single, but I only go to work, home, and church, online church right if i'm praying to the lord to provide a car but i never go into the dealership and i never test drive a vehicle to see which one feels right i'm not you know putting down my deposits i mean yes he can bless you he can just send somebody to give you a key of course he can do that right but if it is something that you want or need, you also have a responsibility. It's not that you're helping God 
We're not asking you to help God, but you have to position yourself and align yourself with the thing that you're praying for, right? So we can't pray for God to grant us patience, but we're miserable and cantankerous and we don't want to deal with anybody. Mm. All right? Um, let us look at the next two scriptures. God will not do everything. He can do everything. He can, don't get me wrong. But he expects us to participate in our walk with him. And that is why it is called a walk. God could have said, enter into this sit down with me. Mm -hmm. But he said, enter into this walk. In fact, there are moments in scripture when he, he, he called it a race. So sometimes we have to run even faster. Psalm 37, 7 and 1 Timothy 4, 10. Psalm 37, 7. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about the evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. 1 Timothy 4, 10. This is why we labor and strive, because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the savior of all people, and especially of those who believe. All right. So we're going to wait upon him. We're going to be patient and we're going to trust him, but we are also going to continue to strive. We're going to continue to go to move towards the thing that God, we believe that God has for us. So if we know that we need to go deeper in God, we're not going to sit on the couch and watch TV. We're going to strive to go deeper. We're going to read the word. We're going to spend time in fasting and prayer. We're going to connect with people who are deep so that they can help to bring us into the deep. Amen? Amen. Final point, people who are adamant about trusting God and then sitting down and waiting for him to make it happen are really saying, God, I don't really believe. Do we agree? If you if you if you decide that you're gonna trust God, but then when you when you petition God about the thing, you sit down and fold your arms. You are essentially saying, God, I don't really believe that it's gonna happen. Oh, yeah. Be mm -hmm. Because you're not creating, you're not opening up yourself for it to happen. It's like sitting on the couch and praying for God to give you a six pack and muscles. <laughs> <laughs> but you never enter the gym, right? <laughs> that's what well, that's what Sister Tara and myself do. We sit on the couch and, and she drink coffee and I drink tea and then we pray for God to give us the summer body, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews 11, six. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because everyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Who do what? Earnestly. earnestly. Right. There is nothing lazy in the word earnestly. All right. All right. So that was the the um culmination of that of that uh, last week. This was just some Bible verses that you would have gone over. So if you want to take a picture, you can do it in your own time. We're not going to focus on this assignment this evening. You can just take a picture of it and do it in your own time because we are responsible Christians. All right? We're good with that? Yes. Okay. So this evening, we are going to discuss the helmet. Of salvation. Mm. Look at that. Kind of looks ugly, doesn't it? Yes. But um, this is what we're discussing this evening, the helmet of salvation. And I, I tried to get a side view and a front view of the helmet so that, you know, we could have a good understanding of what it looks like. Um, this is called the plum. This part up here, the red part. And on some helmets, it's sideways and some it's from front to back. This is called the neck guard at the bottom here. And the side pieces are called the face shield or just side piece. And this part under here is like a chin strap. It goes underneath the chin. All right. 
Okay, so let's have a discussion. What exactly does the Bible mean by salvation? And why is it portrayed as a helmet? Why, why, why didn't um, Paul choose another item from the armor to describe? I mean, we could say the, the shield of salvation because salvation, we could ex uh, argue that it shields us, right? We could say the breastplate of salvation, right? Because, it, I mean, it protects our hearts. Why did he use the helmet? Because it protects the mind. Because it protects the mind. All right. So while, while I was preparing, I, I found two news reports from a British newspaper. And I kind of just summarized them so that we can go through them real quick. The first one reads, Barry Eccleston, a 36-year-old cyclist, was involved in a fatal motor vehicle accident. Reports are that Eccleston, who was not wearing a helmet, um, sustained a skull fracture and had an other head injuries in, a, in the accident. He died Saturday. This is the report um, in summary. The investigators are imploring other motorists to wear a helmet as a simple helmet would have saved his life. Mm -hmm. Right? And I'm sure we hear this from time to time. If we're listening to the news or watching the news or reading the news, we would see, especially the traffic police or, you know, traffic wardens imploring people to wear a helmet, especially motorcyclists. All right? Second one is Jenny Wart Wartworth, an 11 year old girl was knocked unconscious after she fell in the path of an oncoming vehicle which ran over her arm and the top of her helmet. Jenny escaped with minor injuries which included a swollen elbow and bruising to her face. Her parents say she would have been killed without the helmet and are now urging, urging all cyclists to wear them. Hmm. All right. So one aspect of our spiritual armor is the helmet of salvation. And as we can see from the news report, it is not the peace of armor that should be underestimated. Without the helmet of salvation, saints of God, you are dead if you receive a blow from the enemy. Let us read Isaiah 59, verse 17a. Isaiah 59, 17, 18. He put on righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. Okay. So this he is referring to God. Hmm. God himself wore the helmet. <clears throat> so it, when we say the armor of God, we literally talking about the armor of God, right? It is so, so important. The Roman helmet protected the head, obviously, because the head is prime target for the enemy. As we said, one hit to the head and that's it. I mean, maybe if somebody stabbed you in the chest, they might have to inflict several blows. But if you get a gunshot to the head, it's very unlikely that you're going to live. Very, very unlikely. If somebody bash you in the head, it's very unlikely that you're going to live. And even if you do live, your quality of life will be very much decreased. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you get a hit anywhere else on your body, you probably can recover from that. Right? Even to some of the vital organs. If you get a, a, a stab in, or a shot in your kid, in one of your kidneys, you can live your entire life on one kidney. If your liver becomes damaged or injured, it replenishes itself. So really and truly, the heart and the brain 
are probably the only two organs that you know you you you, you may die suddenly if 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 an if a blow or um if a blow is inflicted right so the helmet is extremely extremely important the helmet was made from metal it's design and and i showed you the picture earlier it's design had to balance providing protection which is which is obvious to all of us but it also had to uh, provide for wearability and mobility while allowing the soldier to see. So it can't just be a big, heavy piece of metal covering the head because we don't want to get a blow to the head. But it also had to provide wearability and mobility. So when we're talking about the salvation, our salvation protects us. It does. And we're going to go into some more detail where that is concerned. But in terms of wearability and mobility, we have to exist in this world. We have to keep moving in this world. We have to continue to, 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 to press on, continue to pursue. And so the, 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 our salvation provides us the ability to go through this world and not be weighted down, right? Not be bombarded are exhausted so it provides wearability and mobility it also allows us to see we see a future and a hope that the person without salvation doesn't see we see from different lenses that the person without salvation doesn't see so when we are wearing the helmet of salvation like the roman soldier we have these abilities as well can you see mm -hmm. that yes yes the helmet also I was yes. going to say also that the red fur part, it's interesting because mm -hmm. nowadays our helmets are very camouflaged, but that one was very flashy and you can see it from a distance. So when it, when relating to salvation, people know mm -hmm. that you are saved, right? Amen. 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 The mm -hmm. helmet featured a neck guard and I did show you the neck guard and a face plate which cover the sides of the face, right? So it not only cover your head, but it also protects your neck and the sides of your face. Because what if you only had it on from your forehead, like around the cap of your head? What if you only had on a, something that protected the cap of your head, but somebody wielding mm -hmm. a sword from behind just cut your, 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 cut, cut your head off by inflicting that wound to your neck? I mean, that wouldn't really be helpful, right? So it protected the back of the neck as well. Keep your head on your shoulders. That's what it's talking about mm. by protecting the neck, right? So when you have salvation or when you claim that you have salvation, you it, it has to be evident that you have your head on your shoulders, right? Your neck is protected, mm. yeah? And also the sides of your face, the sides of the soldier's face, I mean. Like the shield, they had special helmets that showed their rank and also for ceremonial purposes. So this is what you were talking about, Sister Tara, um, that you were talking about just now. So the special helmet showed their rank and so the helmets were used as a means of communication, hmm. right? And that's what you you just mentioned, how it's just it was so flashy and you know you could see it from a distance because the helmet was so designed, just like the shield. Remember, we talked about the shield last week and how just by looking at the design on the shield, you could know which rank, rank you're in. But what if the soldier's back is turned to you and you're fighting and everybody is scattered all over the battlefield? And the shield, he's turned is the soldier's face is turned toward an opponent and you're trying to figure out who to help. The helmet shows the rank um, and also shows which, which um, battalion you belong to. And so you are able to join that person just by looking at their helmet. Yes, sir. Hmm. Um, you said the helmet shows the rank. You're talking about that, that I don't remember the name you call it. That the, part, plum. The, the plum. The red part, yeah. yes. Yeah, that's the part that shows the rank. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. The foot soldiers plumb, remember I said to you, some of them run from front to back. So the foot soldiers, which we would call 
Um, I don't know how I don't know how you how you the, the different ranks in in the real army, but like I think the, 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 the I don't know. I'm not gonna try to figure it out. But the foot soldiers are the 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 the, the lowest rank, right? So their plum run from front to back, or sometimes they do not wear a plum at all. The centurions, which are like the big shots, um, theirs run from side to side, right? So do you remember the story about Jesus and the centurion man and how he said he had people where if he told them to run, he they would run. And now Jesus is coming to him. So he said, Jesus, just speak the word and, I, and it will happen. You remember that story? Yes. The centurion said, I have people at my beck and call. And if I tell them to run, they'll run. Because he is of a higher rank in the, in, in the, in the army. And so their plum run from side to side. And so if you're looking at, if you're looking at a plum and it turns sideways, you know that this person is a, a centurion or what we would probably call a general, right? And if it's running from front to back, those are the foot soldiers. Um, the color, red, yellow, or black, also indicate what unit you were with. And as I was talking about when they're fighting on the battlefield and everybody's scattered all about, and you want to know which soldier should I be helping, just look at the plum. Just look at the plum, look at the top of their head, and it will tell you, even if their backs are turned to you, you will see, okay, let me go over here and fight with this one, because this one is a part of my um, rank or battalion. Thank you for that. Um, thank you for that, Minister. <laughs> all right. What is salvation? Um, yeah. Before we go to, before we go to, the, yes, sir. You wanted to say something? No, ma'am. I was just saying you're welcome. Oh, okay. Thanks. All right. So before we go to the next slide, um, we talk about we talked about um, you know, um, identifying and communication and all of these things. So when you have, when you have on the helmet of salvation, people should be able to look at you and know without having to talk to you, hmm. without having to have a conversation and you have to open your mouth and declare, oh, I am a Christian, hmm. right? Because if the soldiers are in the battlefield and one is all the way over east and the other one is over north, there is no way that they can say, hey, come help me fight over here. They just look at the plum and they know that's one of my men. I have to go fight with him. Right? Or they know that's a centurion or that's a foot soldier or whatever the case might be. So when we are wearing as children of God, when we're wearing the, the helmet of salvation, we don't have to open our mouths and declare to somebody that we are Christian or try to convince somebody that we are believers in Christ. Somebody should be able to look at us and the way we live should communicate to them right away that we are a child of God. In our culture mm -hmm. in Jamaica, um, back in the days, not, not so much now, but back in the day, you could look at a Christian not just by the way they live, but by the way they carry themselves. And no, as I said, not so much anymore. But their, their, their dress would be a certain length. You would never see them on the street and their armpits are exposed. Their dress wouldn't be tight where you would see panty lines showing. Their hair would be a certain way. And so, but just by looking at a person, you could say, oh, hmm, that one is a Christian. Hmm. Right? No, we're not focusing on the outward appearance. We have moved away from that. And, and I mean, to some extent, it's, it's not a bad thing. To another extent, sometimes I wonder, but let's, we're not going into that right now, right? But just by looking at this person and how they operate and how they interact with others and, and how they carry themselves and how they speak and how they, you know, present themselves in different situations, you can just look at, you. well, you should be able to just look at them and say, this person has salvation. This person is wearing a helmet of salvation. Right? Because the Bible tells us that we will know them by their fruit. And this is why the plum is so important on top of the helmet. Okay? Questions, comments? 
All right, so what is salvation? Anybody want to, any bright spark wanna answer that question? Please let us not take the whole night. Salvation in regards to the helmet or salvation? It's a straightforward question. What okay. is salvation? It's on my chair. And we're so all salvation. Christians. So we all have salvation, or so I would have imagined. That we believe that Jesus died for us. That we that we declare with our mouths that Jesus is Lord. Okay. That we are serving God with everything. All right. Okay. That's one way to put it. Yes, you're not wrong. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Salvation is when you are saved or delivered um, from sin. You just look that up on the internet? No, I, I have it written down. From the internet? Based on what I read. Okay. I've read delivered or saved from something. I'm sorry? What, what did you say? I was reading up on some stuff from before. So oh, okay. From I had written that down. Because I saw that exact response. That's why I asked you. <laughs> oh, okay. But yes, yes. Um, in in the simplest, um, simplest term, it means to be delivered or to be saved. In our case, we are saved. You want to say something, um, Opal and Christian? You have something to share? We'd love to hear what you have to say. Main, the main, you know, um, I was going to share. Yes, yeah, so can you please go ahead and share it? I was going to say it's that freedom that we get when we commit our lives to Christ. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's why you're laughing, Kristen. It's so funny. All right. Um... Let us look at Exodus 14, 13 and Micah 7, 6 to 8, please. Exodus 14, verse 13, read. <clears throat> um, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Amen. Amen. Micah, Micah 7, 6, 8. Mm -hmm. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter rises up against the um, mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the, man, are the men of his own house. Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Amen. 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 So salvation is the act of saving or delivering. Um, what is the penalty? What, 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 what do we, why do we need saving? Why die. do we need saving? Well, I'm trying to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so the penalty is death. death and death. how can we be saved? By if we confess with our mouths believe our and hearts. believe in our hearts that Jesus died and rose again, You're then right. we shall be saved. Sister Trish, Sister Trish, yes. um, I was I was just gonna mention the, the pretty thing that you created. I think it was two weeks ago. Road. Oh yes. Yes. Right. And 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 a lot of us didn't do the homework for various reasons, right? Which we will not get into tonight. But how can we be saved? Let us look at some of these scriptures. Um, let us try and get them in order as they are on the screen, please. So Romans 6 23. For the wages mm -hmm. of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All right. Romans Amen. 5, 8. Mm -hmm. um, 
sorry, but God commendeth his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent mm -hmm. not his son in the world to condemn the world, mm -hmm. but that the world must be saved through him. Awesome. First mm -hmm. Timothy 2 through the 4. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants mm -hmm. all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Amen. Amen. Luke 1, 30, 77. To give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Thank you. Second Peter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. So it is so we don't have to be. And, and I remember I got some questions regarding the Roman road when we discussed the homework. For, um, it, 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 you don't have to be restricted to the Roman road. There are yeah. many other scriptures that you could use as reference to show how we can be saved, right? Yes. Yeah. Amen, Kashina. How do we receive salvation? we believe how do we receive can we have yes. faith and believe the that same. Jesus... no i'm hearing a lot of jumble mumbo jumble <laughs> not sure what people are saying because everybody's trying to talk at the same time we receive it when we believe it <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> you just gave me the answer. Who just gave me the answer? I think it was you who just gave me the answer, young lady. Yes. Yeah. Who me? Yes, so, mystery. Yes, when yes. you said the scripture. Oh. Confessing with your believe in your heart and you shall be saved. <laughs> Let us look at um Acts 2 38 and Ephesians 2 8 to 9. Because everybody knows Romans 10, 9 to 10 already, right? Right. I have okay. Ephesians. Act so whoever has Act, go ahead. Go ahead. I have Acts 2, 38. Um, and it reads, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so do you see a difference with the two questions? Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. A slight difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to... Tell me what difference, what the difference is. Um, well, I think for the, like, so when you ask, how can we be saved? The answers point towards the action of God. Right. Um, and then how we receive salvation is the action of us. So what do we have Thank to do you. in order that salvation? Perfect. That's exactly it. Thank you so much. Um, the reason I ask is because I, I, I thought I saw somebody like they were like, but wait, you didn't just ask me this, but there is a difference. All right. <laughs> just wanted to make that clear. All right. Mm -hmm. And then the, the next point is salvation is permanent. Mm -hmm. It is permanent. Mm -hmm. All right. Let us look at the scripture. Doesn't have to come in order. Mm -hmm. All right, John, what is that, 10? John 10, 10, 28. It reads, 
I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. All right. John 6, 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Mm -hmm. John, John 1, 1, 12 to 13. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, okay. not with physical birth resulting from the human passion or plan, but the birth that comes from God. Awesome. All right. Salvation is also available for everybody. Yes. Titus 2 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. All righty. Okay. So, mm -hmm. what does a helmet have to do with salvation? Hmm. Um, I think. It has based on the function of the helmet it's supposed to protect the transformed mind so that like you don't get attacked okay. or, i don't know all right somebody's on the strong thing <laughs> where does the spiritual battle rage in the mind, in the mind. Oh. yeah let us look at this so i wasn't having the shot Second Corinthians four. Second Corinthians four four. The God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. All right. So the enemy, his agenda is to blind people's mind, right? Mm -hmm. So when we come into the knowledge of who Jesus is and accept the free gift of salvation, then what we have to do with the mind? Protect it. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. awesome. Protect it. Yes, because if you know that the enemy goes after people's mind, minds, and now your mind is transformed, then you have to ensure that the enemy can't come after yours anymore. Yeah. All right? So that is what yeah. the helmet has to do. The helmet is the covering of our minds with the salvation of Christ. Whatever our circumstances, we as believers, we have eternal hope. So what's the worst that can happen? Death? That's all right. Who, who is afraid to die? Is Christ and to die is gain. Mm. No, seriously, who is afraid? A lot of people are afraid to die. Be honest. Like spiritual death or physical death? Physical death. We're talking about <laughs> leaving this death. life, girl. <laughs> We're talking about, no, literally, who is afraid to die? Leaving this I, life. Like, to an extent, and, I feel like I'm a little bit afraid, but to then another extent it's like it's it's fine because i know where i'm going you know what i mean okay does that make sense i'm i'm not yeah, afraid to die right now <laughs> yeah 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 that's what i mean like you know if i had the option i would choose not to die right now right but if it really but, comes I down mean, to it like it is what it is you know but with all the stress and the, I mean, sometimes you just, you know, went to, I, I don't want to go to school. I don't want to go to work. I can't bother fix my car. It's too expensive. All these bills coming in, 31 bills for each day of the month. No, you call like, it on the day. <laughs> like, yeah, all right, second I, it's for a reason, yeah. Second um, I have that one. We are Oh, sorry. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Willing. Who said I didn't want to die? <laughs> willing. <teacher. laughs> 
<laughs> who's willing to be absent from this body and present with the Lord. So we want to live Eventually. for Christ, but we don't want to die for him. Hmm. <laughs> well, for me, Pastor Cash. Yes? For me, um, then it's not a problem. It's just that I think that I have more to, to do in this life. Uh, who determines that, Sir Lloyd? Yeah. <laughs> who determines? Who on, who on, who determines how much you have left to do in this life? You? Because you don't get the degree yet? <laughs> <laughs> That's enough now. Well, it is my hope that... Uh, oh! Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so in other words, you're 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 agreeing with everybody else. You're not willing because it is I'm your willing, hope. Yes. I'm willing. Yes. Your hope. <laughs> but, that I don't lie right now because it, know that I have more to offer. No, then because it, it would make sense that I die you now and uh, I'm gonna <laughs> accomplish what the Lord wants me to do. Which is what. But, so, okay. All right, let's leave that. Let's leave that for now. <laughs> yes, <Okay>. yes, <laughs> I was gonna say, like, in response to that, what? But whose fault would it have been, though, if, like, say, God gives you a measure of ten years, and you're like, and you All should right, have accomplished age, it by the time you're ten. At, yeah, and you, you, you were like. <laughs> Oh, you're nine and a half, and you're like, oh, I really hope I don't die right now because I haven't done anything with what. Like, that's not on God, that's on you. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, yep. I mean, I don't, yep. I'm not willing to be outside of the body with the Lord right now. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. But at the end of the day, <laughs> it's really, it's really like on us but if we don't I mean, accomplish the thing at the time that we have that. a lot to do. You know, we are we are we are we are um talking about it and joking about it, but um it's a serious, serious matter mm. because what this is telling us that is that we have to put on some urgency on doing what God has called us to do because we really don't know what the measure of time that God has put yeah. on us. We we don't know. Mm. Like literally, we, we have no idea. And the Bible says, who can add a day to his life or take off a day off of their lives? So if we are sitting here, including myself, sitting here and saying, boy, I really don't accomplish, I haven't accomplished everything that God has set me out to accomplish on this earth. So I, I'm not quite ready yet. Listen, you're tripping. You need to be pushing harder. The effort that we are putting in getting the masters and the effort that we are putting in, you know, saving for the for the for the house and the effort that we are putting in trying to find a husband so we can get married and have like a sex before we die. Listen, we need to we need to really, really shift that perspective and focus on what did God call us to do and how am I going to accomplish this before I die because I must leave earth empty. Yes, sir. Um so you know, even as I listen to us, I realize that a lot of the reasons why we are not ready to die hmm. is because of the material things. Yeah. It's not because, and everybody's going to, everybody has their family, they want to miss and stuff. But the question, you know, that I'm pondering in, in myself is, if I'm not ready to die today, why do I need to live tomorrow? Because I'm not supposed to be living for the material things. Mm -hmm. Wow, so, wow, wow, wow. Yes, I understand. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna miss this. I, I want, but the, the focus just seemed to be, you know, mm -hmm. there's still something I haven't achieved, but I'm not sure if the things that we are thinking about are spiritual. Mm. that we haven't achieved yet or are they you know but and and you named a couple of them you know mm -hmm. so I, I think our perspective and yes. the truth is it's hard because you know we, we we work hard but then we are the same ones that we will tell somebody else that they need to ensure that their focus is Christ and not on the material things mm -hmm. 
But mm -hmm. in our conversations and what we're saying is really, ah, uh, you know, I mean, I haven't achieved everything I want to. When you, when you look at the things you have put that you really haven't achieved, it's not really, oh, I want another soul. I'm not sure if any one of us who, hmm. or any person who said, no, I'm, not, mm -hmm. I'm not ready to die, it was because I want to see somebody else get saved. Hmm. You know, it, it, hmm. and thinking that it was, you know, but there's some things that I really haven't achieved yet, you know? So, and it's a hard question, it is, but I believe the closer we get to Christ, you understand? For me, it's like, it's like, am I ready? I'm ready. I'm sorry for those who will be left behind because my family will miss me, but I'm ready. Because I believe we have to get to a place. We have to get to a place where we are in a position to say, God, where I am is where you want me to be. It's not that I still need to. And, and don't get me wrong, because we, 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 we will never attain the full, understand? But it is to be comfortable. And comfortable don't mean put up your foot. That's not what I mean by comfortable. Understand? So, you know, I, I, as I said, you know, we, we, yeah, there are so many things that we, we want to achieve. But I'm not sure that one of the reasons why a lot of persons are not ready is because of Christ and not necessarily because of themselves. Amen. The word says we walk by faith and not by sight. And we are, in fact, confident, hopeful, and willing to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And as and this is that's that's what I was getting at <clears throat> when I said we have to be intentional and um more aggressive about our poor pursuit when it comes to our godly mandate on earth, and we must be deliberate and determined to die empty. So all of the other things are really just accessories but why are we on the earth and what is the purpose of our calling and unless we some of us i don't even know if we know what that is and that's and that's probably probably a part of the problem i see your hand sister tara right but we have to be determined to to um use our time wisely remember the wise and the foolish virgins they were waiting for the bridegroom and they ran out of oil because they weren't adequately prepared. Go ahead, Sister Tara. Well, I thank you for what you shared, Rev, because like I recognize too, uh, sometimes it's so easy when you start to get a glimpse of what God does have for you to run with, oh, well then how do I plan for it? And you lose that focus of the people that God have for you instead of the, instead of, okay, what material things do I need to have in place? And, and don't get me wrong. There's a place for planning, right? But I recognize how easily, cause you get excited, how easily that focus, if you're not at a place where you're like, I'm willing to die for Christ. I'm willing to die today to stay rooted and grounded in that moment when God starts to reveal mm -hmm. what he's going to do with you. Amen. And, mm. and, and that is why it is so important for us to keep the helmet of salvation in place because it protects our mind and cause help us to not allow our thoughts to, 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 to run away and, 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 and cause us to be focusing on things that we're not supposed to be focusing on. 
because the, the helmet of salvation protects the mind and help us to stay focused on what we ought to really stay focused on. And, and, and so that's a very good point. Hmm. <clears throat> yes, sir. That's a question before, and it's a little side note, but it's something that I want us to really to take in consideration. Mm -hmm. We probably need to stop reading the Bible and laugh at, or for Jamaican terms, skin up our nose, at different things in the Bible, like the foolish versions and the, the prodigal son, and categorize these guys as also negative. Because the truth is, if we look at our own lives, we are no better. Okay. And as I said, it's a little side note. And, and what, one thing I realized is like, we read the story of like the Israelites and we bash them for how they went back to over and over the same thing, right? But a lot of, if we are to truly look at our own lives, how many times have we, maybe it's not 40 years, but how many times have we gone back <clears throat> to the same mistake that we were told by the Holy Spirit not to, right? So I said, it's only the side note that I just thought about that Sometimes we, 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 and I'm not saying, you know, to have pity, but I'm saying we sometimes need to ensure that even as we read, we look at ourselves and look at where we are in God before we sometimes cast judgment or even, you know, sometimes put out even sermons, you know, and oh, this person is that, that person is that, when sometimes we are, we are worse. You know, we are we are a little worse than than where they might have been. Thank you. All right. Our eternal hope works like the helmet, or vice versa, to protect our minds from the discouragement and despair in this world. Let us look at First Thessalonians five eight to eleven. <clears throat> But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. Amen. 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 <clears throat> when, 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 when Satan throws his fiery darts at our mind, we need to remind him where we are spending eternity versus where he is spending eternity. Huh. We also need to remind him about God's promises to us. Right? So when he comes to tell us that, you know, whatever the, the, the lie is that he's coming with, when he comes to rage war in the battlefield of our minds, we ought to remind him of where he is going to spend eternity versus where we are going to spend eternity. But but how can we do that if we are not so sure about where we're spending eternity? Hmm. We're not a hundred percent confident of our final fate. Wow. <laughs> our way of living and even our way of thinking should differ from the world's. Hmm. Our way of living and even our way of thinking should differ from the world. And when you look for the scripture, if we really should think about it, everything begins in the mind. The Bible tells us True. everything, everything, it doesn't matter how simple or how complex, it begins in the mind. It starts as an idea, a thought. So, 
the scripture that you read before my version says that you are to be clear-headed so is there exactly. someone who is constantly like myself over the back and forth then therefore does that means i'm not wearing the helmet but i still have salvation but i'm not wearing it properly well the bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways and so you find that when you know your what what did your, your version said again clear-headed yeah when when yeah. when you lack that uh sense of clarity you know it affects every other aspect of your life and you find yourself in a position where you know you're you're, you're in a good job you're, you're you're you know you hold a good position in your job and you know all of these things but you still can't see your way because you're not so sure where you're going and the lord reminded me of this um i could say a couple of months ago or maybe not so long you know, he said, if you don't, if you're not clear on where you are going, every distraction will look like an opportunity. Hmm. If you are not clear about where you are going, every distraction will look like an opportunity. And so one of the first things that we ought to do is to get clear about what God has called us to be clear on that and once and, and and if you if you if you you know i would probably hear this a lot because of some of the circles that i run with but you would you would hear people talk about you know getting clarity first that's the first and you know that's the first thing you want to do get clarity 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 and and if you are working with uh, if you're working with a coach or a mentor or somebody like that, they're probably going to spend most of their time talking about clarity because you see, once that light bulb goes off in your head and you are, yes, wow, I get it now, then everything else will just honestly automatically fall into place. Like you won't have to do anything else because if you are clear about what you are called to do, then it doesn't matter what else is happening around you, you know. Your sole purpose. It's like when you put a, a blinders on the, 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 the horses and they're running. And it doesn't matter which other horses beside them. They don't see them. All they see is the path ahead. Yes? yes. And that is why the Bible says a person who is not clear and is back and forth in, in their mind is unstable in every other aspect of their life. That's what the mm -hmm. word says. So if we find that we are caught in this trap, let us find a way to get out and to become clear. I remember in November of 2009, I began to seek God about, and my husband can, can, um, attest to this i began to see god in the very last bench that was when the conversation started between us in the back of the church that we used to attend when we first met very very last bench i used to sit at the back and i was troubled in my spirit because i was like you know i don't believe this is it i want to know what it is that god really wants me to do and we i said it to him and i asked him and two other people to pray with me concerning this matter and i purposed in myself that i was going to find out what my purpose in life was my god-given purpose that is and one of the things that the lord said to me in that search now, when I set out to find the answer, in the back of my head, I expected God to say, all right, you're going to lead praise and worship. I called you to sing. I called you to minister. I called you, you know, I expected something like that. But the Lord, one of the things that the Lord said to me, and he said quite a few things, and I have all of them written down from November 2009. I have them still. And sometimes I go back to them and read just to keep, you know, my mind focused on that. And one of the things he said to me, he said, just get clear about God. 
just get clear about God. That was, and I was, it, I, for the first few years, it kind of troubled me because I never understand how that made sense and how that related to my calling. Like, what's your point, God? I'm asking a question here. But he said, just get clear about God. And I eventually understood that years later. Because when I am clear about God, then everything else is just noise on the side. You know, because it doesn't matter. I'm, I can be in my bed sick, and this has happened before. I'm in my bed, not able to move, and I'm on the phone ministering to somebody because I'm clear. I know exactly what God has called me for, 100%. All right. Um, anybody have John 17, 15 to 16 or Philippians 2, 5? I have Philippians. Please go ahead. Philippians 2 5. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. John 15 and 16 says, And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine but his that sent me the word so so we thank you thank you so we have to um we have to live different we have to think different um john sorry. 17 15 yes sorry. 16. sorry okay i pray that thou shouldest take them out of the world but thou thou should keep them from the evil they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sorry. All right. What did you read? John 7? Yeah, it's not John 7. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. Right? Um. Yes, thank you for that. I was just going to read it, but you got to before me. Imagine not knowing what the future ultimately holds. Mm. Seriously. The worries and the problems produced by living in this world would overwhelm us. Now, when we look at our future in terms of the tangible, natural sense, we don't know what the future holds. And it causes so much anxiety, doesn't it? Do you have any idea how many people, how many people I am? Um, interact with on a day-to-day -day basis who are taking upwards of two medications for anxiety. What? Wow. Nine out of every 10 people that I care for hmm. are prescribed upwards of two medication for anxiety. Why is this? Because they don't know what their future holds. Mm -hmm. Now imagine a Christian or somebody who professes to be a Christian, but they're not so sure about their eternal future. Imagine the person who doesn't know Christ, who wouldn't know um, about their eternal future. Why is it important that we wear the helmet of salvation? Let's look at Matthew 13 and 22. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of his life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. Mm. Hmm. Do you see anybody like that in church? I don't yes. mean KB, I mean in the church of God. Yes, yes. Every Sunday. Every Thursday night for some of us or Wednesday night. Every Saturday, we go to church and we hear the word. But we're not ready to diet. We're not willing because we have so much to do. We have so much to accomplish. We don't get this yet. We don't get that yet. And so the word cannot take root in our hearts. It's not that we're not hearing. It's not that we're not getting the teaching. 
but we are more concerned about the cares of the world. Yeah. We're more worried about that. And so the word of God cannot take root, cannot bear fruit. Christians, children of God, let us keep on the helmet of salvation. How do we secure our helmet? How do we do that? We have to remember that salvation comes from God. We have to be confident that God is on our side. And we have to know without doubt that if we fully commit to him, it is impossible for us to lose. It's not about believing, it's about knowing. Let us look at the scriptures. Psalm 27, 1, Psalm 3, 8, in no particular order, Romans 8, 18. Psalm 27, 1, the Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the, is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Romans 8, 18. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. And Psalm 3, 8. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. How many of us are 100% convinced of these scriptures to the point where we can say, as we would say in Jamaica, anything, anything. Meaning, Sister Tara, we don't care. It doesn't matter what comes what me. How many of us really, really can honestly say that we believe and hold fast to this statement right here? And we know for a fact that our salvation comes from God and that he is on our side. And it is impossible for us to lose. How many of us can honestly, truly say that tonight? That's a question for you to ask yourself. Hmm. Not really for me to get the answer. But we have to really be honest. This is how we are going to secure our helmet. This is how we are going to um, avoid being caught up in anxiety and, and, and worry. This is what is going to prevent us from falling into depression. Seriously. Hmm. This is how we secure the helmet. Another way or in addition rather to that, is to know that if we remain in God, we are unstoppable and we must be victorious. Revelation 21, one to four. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared and the sea was, all, was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, like a bride beautiful dressed for her husband. Guys, this has nothing to do with believing. This has everything to do with knowing. The next way to secure our salvation is to value our salvation. Put a high value on our salvation. And diligently fight the good fight. 
So we're not talking about it's okay to not do everything right today because we fall short of the glory of God. It's not talking about coming to church on a Sunday and having to spend 30 minutes of our time doing a prayer of consecration because we might have sinned and messed up. We, listen, we're talking about valuing the salvation to the point where everything you may, you are constantly, diligently going against the enemy and knowing that, listen, I'm putting my foot according to where the, 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 the word of God has lit the path. We're talking about being serious about our walk with God. How else are we going to secure the helmet? Let us look at 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8. <clears throat> For I am ready, being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. No, there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. But Amen. by our, uh, thank you. By our previous conversation, we're not there yet, are we? By our what you were in and out. I said by our previous conversation, we're not there yet. Oh. Yeah. We have to value our salvation and be diligent about fighting the good fight. My version said eagerly look forward. So if we are eagerly, eagerly look, look forward. forward to our death with right. willing to die. Hmm. But we just said that we're not willing. Right. So what are yeah. we doing really? What are we doing really? <laughs> hmm. When we, uh, fight stalling. The <laughs> huh? when we say we're not willing, they're pretty much stalling. Yeah. As Paul says, when we fight the fight, we will trade our soldier's helmet for our eternal crown of righteousness. That is awesome. God wants us to be sure of our salvation. So we don't wallow in doubt. So we don't doubt his ability to save us. And so based on that, he gives us a down payment. You know, you go to you go to get a job done. And before the person touch, before the contractor touch your job, you have to provide some kind of guarantee that you are going to come back right? And so you have to pay a deposit on that job before they start it because they're not going to waste their time. And they know that when you pay a deposit, you're not going to waste your money. So there's a guarantee. There's a guarantee. And so God also provides us with a guarantee so we can know for sure that he is coming back, right? Hello? Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. 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 Can we go into the scriptures, please? They're on the screen. I feel like I've lost the church. Ephesians 1, 13 to 14 read. In whom he also trusted, after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after he, that he believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Amen. Amen. John 10, 27 to 29. My sheep listen to my voice. 
I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me for my father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else. No yeah. one can snatch them from the father's hand. So pretty much this is saying that we can be sure of where we stand with God because Jesus didn't just come and die on the cross and was raised and gone to heaven but he made a down payment mm -hmm. he made a deposit because he left his down payment in the person of the Holy Spirit so that we can be assured that he's coming back He's coming back. Amen. Comments, questions. Hmm. Nothing from me, Pastor Pat. It's it's a it's a it's a sure down payment, you know. Is <laughs> it's, it's it's I mean, even as the way you put this, um and, and I love the the last the last God wants us to be sure of our salvation, so we don't wallow in doubt of His ability to save us. You know, and why I like that is because earlier you said that God does this, but we have to play a part. And sometimes we can we we think that you know we are the ones who mm -hmm. who saved us. You know, mm. um, but in His ability. Mm to save us we have to just accept it and that's that's our role accept it um and i love the fact that you put that you know his down payment is the gar that word there the guarantee mm -hmm. as guarantee in yeah. the person of the holy spirit there's no there's no if you know there's 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 no there's no if and you know we all know the holy spirit so um you know, very, 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 very good. Very good. I, I, I love I love that last um last paragraph. Thank you. Can I hear from the church in Kingston? Are you guys hearing me? That's fair. Can I hear from the church in Kingston? I'm sorry. I said you are clear. Yes. So tell me, tell me what you're clear on. That that man. <laughs> My salvation is sure, and that the, the, the down payment that is already paid for me is a sure one. So all I have to do is not doubt about what God has already done. Your son? Talk to me, talk to me, let's go. Hello? I do not have anything to say. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. All right, guys. Um, I know it looks like a big chunk, but it's just a bunch of questions that I want you to ponder over this week. All right. <clears throat> we must work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, according to Philippians 2. Right? Therefore, we are responsible to choose to accept God. We are also responsible to stay on the path of obedience. And so the Lord provides a checklist for us. So the assignment for this week is to ask yourself these questions and identify what areas do you find yourself strongest in or weakest in? What areas can you improve? And just to take the time to research your weakest traits. 
<laughs> and develop a plan. So um, overcome that. Thank you for your time. Okay. Sir, I, I hand over to you.